What's up with this, uh, oh, the Olympics, the basketball team. First, the American team lost to Puerto Rico, and then uh, they lost to the white boys from Lithuania. That has got to hurt. They don't even like to lose to us in the schoolyard. And they get lit up by the people with the whitest skin in the world, Lithuania. Iverson can't go back to the neighborhoods. He'll walk in and be like, yo, man, you want to play us? We're not white. You know? Then there are all those crazy boxers from all those countries that left Russia and made up fake crazy names for themselves, winning, like Azerbaijan, Tajikistan. Do you see those Genghis Khan-looking bastards lighting up everybody? These guys train by, like, punching the milk out of goats. They are... They are fierce. And I don't mean that in the Jim McGreevy sitting in the budget meeting going, that legislation is fierce kind of way. What else? Oh, yeah, now there's a new bar. You heard about this, where they serve alcohol through a mist. You don't even drink it. You can get drunk without drinking. You know, you have to inhale fumes in, like, a mask or something. Then the cops pull you over and say, will you take a breath of loss? You're like, oh, please, I've had enough, officer, you know? But it's kind of interesting. You inhale vapors, and it gets you, like, wasted, and just from... They have a name for it, too. Pot. <laughs>
sensitive. First of all, they pulled it before it actually came out. Mm -hmm. If it would have came out and then you'd had a problem with it, so they must have saw there was something wrong with it because they didn't put it out. So I think right. people being it was too just, sensitive. It was just... Now, if it would have said, how will they cheat, and then under it it said, Republicans, election 2004, <laughs> then I would have been a lot make more sense. That's just... <laughs> <laughs> a good one. <laughs> he said, you are giving my star. <laughs> Let him get his nice star. laugh. That was in a minute. That was a good one. But I'll say this. The $65 international fee that the University of Massachusetts is charging its foreign students has been judged discriminatory by the American Arbitration uh. Association. Critics yeah. have called this charge a surveillance fee. What do you think? Well, it's the Syrian students. I mean, why have them waste their money on a, on a surveillance fee when they need it for C4? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, it's funny. At first, at first when I read it, I was like, I was like, nah, this is wrong. You can't. It's per semester, too. It's not like just per year. It's per semester they yeah. got to pay this fee. But then I was like, you know what? This is the best country in the world, and you want to come over here and go to school? Pay the fee and shut up, then. <laughs> and that's Pay the fee and shut up. Just, this is a different country now. You know, we used to yeah. be a turnstile nation. Now we need to be a fortress. Thank you, you know what I'm saying? I agree with him. We used to be an easy pass nation. Now we have to be a one link. No, go ahead. <laughs> And they gotta put, you know, different goofy word in to make it sound like it's not racist. This is the thing. It'd be wonderful. You see can how I... you've spooked our country, your people? That, that's what no I'm saying. Pun intended. Let, can I oh, listen? Oh, oh, is, it so, <laughs> is it so wrong for black people to run all the, the national security? Is it so wrong for us to do that? We you don't. Should. I don't have white guilt. I'm gonna treat these people poorly and tell them that I'm gonna treat them poorly. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm it's, not going to pretend that in, in this world I'm going to say we got to watch you. Adam, that's why I, enjoy your class. That's why the, t the people that never get by security at, at the airport is those sisters with the giant nails sitting there barred. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. They're like, you better wait, take on your bed. You know, they don't play games. Like, everyone listens to them. You're right. I think black people should be in charge of security. In charge, man, because we don't have uh, guilt. Just we don't promise have guilt. you won't, uh, you know, get a little light fingered while you're there. <laughs> It's a nice, simple request. You'd be making a nice buck and make it union. Well, I don't like that. the fact that you're implying that black people would be good at security because they would steal all the guns going through the metal detectors. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you were saying, and it's racist. Whoa, and I didn't like it. this yeah. good cop, bad cop. Jesus, yeah, what do you think? These are white tricks we don't know? Good cop, bad cop? You little raggedy, mushroom face asshole. <laughs> Ah, anyone in? see it? Well, I, this sign was for the comedians to see it. Did you guys see it? We got. I know. I was busy. Oh, but you do know what happened. <laughs> Is that the side story on the Exorcist? Is that um, Mel Gibson was supposed to direct it? <laughs> but, <laughs> he quit when the studio wouldn't let him give the devil a Jewish last name. <laughs> that was a good one. All right, let's move to this. the title, I thought it was a Bush documentary. Oh. Whoa! 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 Hey, you know his birthday is 6646? Really? That's his birthday. No. Three sixes at his birthday. He's the devil. <laughs> say something, sucker boy. What? Yeah, yeah devil. move on to the next one. You no, got no. enough for that. You're right. I don't want to say anything because that's such a scientific way of looking at it, you damn crazy island Haitians. You better stop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Hazen. Yeah. You better Mike, stop disrespecting our seventh and eighth cents, man. White people dip. Stop. Seventh and eighth cents. What are you stop rolling bones? Stop no. wanting evidence all the time. Why do you slice a chicken and figure out if he's a devil? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Stop, stop wanting evidence all the time, man. You got to understand, we sniff these things that mean something, oh, your man. Oh, intuition stinks. It's the best. <laughs> How do you think this show started size me up? Not what do you think? Well, white people, black people size people up quickly. Nah, and, nah. Uh, uh, white people started sizing up, if you remember, when black people were brought over. <laughs> they <were> stopping. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Green's Without a Paddle was the weekend's number two movie. Oh, Take a look. Oh, <laughs> For three childhood friends. Let's take the trip. The answers to their problems are out there. Hey, look, a deer. I'm in over my head. Don't tell me that. Our only chance is to huddle together for one. I, for one, choose death. This never leaves the cave without a paddle. 
I was going to stop by. I was going to ask who goes to see this, but yeah, a couple of chuckles. <laughs> and anybody chuckled at the promo and not at the absurdity of it, please has to leave now. Oh, God. <laughs> I, give yeah, this, yeah, yeah. I give this oh. film two thumbs in the eyes whoever directed this. <laughs> <laughs> And, and what kills me, it's Seth, you got this Seth Green. The only reason he's a star is because the legend turned down Austin Powers. <laughs> I heard about it. What did it turn down? His role? You heard about it from me. What do you think? You're reading the trades? I'm saying, I heard about it. I told you the story five times. Why don't you tell America? You phony bastards. Tell America the story. I didn't pay attention. I you turned down. Patrice turned wanted down one of Powers. the countries to know what you turned down. Yeah. And what role? Or Mike Myers called me up years ago. He goes, look, I want you to play the son, because chronologically, the son would have been closer to my age when you think it was 1960 he was born. That, and he begged me to play that. I was Wait like, now nah, I'm busy whoa. with my own screen. Stop play. rationalizing the character now, stupid. You turned it down. This, just explain. He was like, it would have been my age. Right. But now, you didn't care when he was off. Just, just explain what a anyway, dummy that was underneath. I was underneath. a pompous ass, and I go, Mike, I'm writing my own screenplay, which, of course, no one's ever heard of. <laughs> and he goes, no, this is going to be big. I go, yeah, no, I know. We both got to do our own thing. So he did his own thing. And now you got Seth Green with a stupid paddle movie. That could be me sitting there with those two dummies. Wait, so paddling, that, making jokes. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Was that, was that, was that, um, was that Celtic Pride the, that you decided not to do it? No, no, no. That was Night at the Roxbury. Not, oh, that's right. Night, okay, Night at the Roxbury. You know, Tyler wrote Night at the Roxbury. Okay, all right, cool. That was better than that. was better than that. Yeah, why can't you have Austin Powers? Once you, you have Crocodile Dundee 2, you don't need any of the films. <laughs> Coming in third was Princess Diaries 2, The Royal Engagement. Here's a look at some of the magic. Mr. Markowitz has everything a girl could ever want, except the one thing she's always dreamed of. Princess Mia is not married in 30 days. What? She forfeits this throne. Now, a girl who's never been lucky in love Whoa. will lose her family's claim to the throne. <laughs> unless she can do the impossible. Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement. Any movie that has a promo where the tray hits a crown off and that's the funny part, I guess must be a great movie. <laughs> this whole movie is about she has to have an arranged marriage. Or else she can't lose her fortune, like easy money. Every marriage is arranged marriage. Uh-oh. You Mike? gotta arrange a way to pay for that ring, to pay for that home, to pay for that honeymoon. You gotta arrange a way to get rid of her body later. <laughs> a lot of things you gotta arrange all throughout this pick. Sounds like you're ready to write a screenplay. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think? Could you at least... One, I want one of you to one one week. Just one of you see a promo. I would have seen it, but the dude in my neighborhood with the bootlegs ain't have that. <laughs> There's no bootleg. There's no bootleg. <laughs> no bootleg. Jim has given us a little present to do this segment with. Every once in a while, we like to respond to the feedback. <laughs> you heartless scamps leave for us on the Tough Crowd message boards. Jim, let's start with you. This guy has a question. Norton's head is so friggin' big. Is that him in those stupid Six Flags commercials? Dressed as that old man dancing around? Ah, uh, this one really hurt. <laughs> because the two things I hate most in life are dancing and old people. <laughs> And uh, please don't ever write another post ending with an exclamation point. It makes you sound like an over-anxious civilian idiot. And the only thing worse than an exclamation point in written humor is to write the word wink in parentheses. <laughs> Your post was a lame attempt at being cutting, and I hope you die in a hotel fire. All right. <laughs> this one is for... This one is for Patrice. So mean. Don't be mad at Patrice, everyone. It's not his fault. He constantly knocks on Whitey. If he couldn't do that, he wouldn't have any material. Patrice. <laughs> Yeah, do you really think I want to spend all my time talking about Whitey? Well, I don't. But you give me no choice. Whitey's a funny. Especially when Whitey is trying to be serious. <laughs> if, you, if you think you're talking bad about... You think I'm talking bad about how Whitey's dance? Well, then stop dancing, Whitey, because you're funny when you do it. <laughs> Whitey does talk in a hack of uh, Whitey voice. Well, I... <laughs> you do. I, I mean, am I lying? It's funny. Um, especially when you're serious. And I'll stop joking about Whitey when Whitey has an intervention with Whitey to admit to Whitey how ridiculously funny Whitey really is. You're really hilarious. And I don't mention sports because you're going to see how funny Whitey really is when I beat Colin's stupid head in basketball on Thursday. Watch closely. Okay. Then you won't be proud Here, of it. Here's one for me. I think your show is really funny, but every night you spew on about how George W. has proved his leadership. The man is a complete idiot, and you obviously want to... 
fuck his ball sack, you big... <laughs> you big douche. <laughs> Free the world by freeing the weed. Legalize it now. <laughs> you know, you're right about that, buddy, because everyone knows the best way to get ahead in show business today is to say positive things about George Bush. <laughs> you figured out my plan. I kiss up to him and the Hollywood powers want to work with me because they're all notoriously Republican. <laughs> I don't like the fact that you ha accuse me of Machiavellian uh, schemery because I disagree with you, you ass, you little fascist <laughs> Michael moron. Don't you ever, ever talk to me. I am a lot of things, but no one can accuse me of thinking before I speak. <laughs> Jim, this guy made an interest. <clears throat> Was that another one? What? No, this, this guy made an interest. <laughs> This guy made an interesting observation. Yeah. Oh, he, he crushed us at the beginning of the segment. You didn't smell it? Oh, I, I was just, that's why I had blueberries stuck in my nose. Oh, it smells okay. like seafood. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that his skin? <laughs> Please tell me. I don't care if you have an IQ of 180 and you're 90 years old. Nothing's funny than somebody farting on TV. Oh. That was funny. Oh, and this, guy says, this guy says this about Norton. Norton needs reality check. He has the nerve to talk about fat chicks on a constant basis when he's a dead ringer for the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> He'd be lucky to get any chick. I need a reality check. Oh, let's tone down the insults a bit. <laughs> uh, what else do I need? To uh, take a chill pill and get a life? <laughs> And uh, just a little minor correction. Uh, not only do I constantly talk about fat chicks, but sometimes I'll take one to dinner and slip a <laughs> into a fourth bowl of ice cream. <laughs> and I'm certainly, uh, I'm most certainly not a dead ringer for the Pillsbury Doughboy. Uh, if you poke me in the belly, instead of giggling, I'm gonna look you right in the eye and all over your hand. <laughs> This last one's to me. Colin's a black dude with white skin. His black impressions are a little too accurate. And he knows way too much about black folk. What gives? Sorry, I do know a lot about black people and Latins, Asians, Arabs, and, and of course the white people. I'm a people person. But black people, as you know, being one yourself, sir, have a certain je ne sais quoi that I uh, savor. From their accusatory glares out of the idling escalade <laughs> to their conspiratorial eyebrow raises to each other when they perceive white slight, they are under constant <laughs> scrutiny from the total package. And therefore, my friend, be ever vigilant in my presence or you will rue the day. And if you don't believe me, ask this typical product of the underclass, this, <laughs> this epitome of disgruntled black manhood that is sitting next to me daydreaming of burning down Massa's house, raping his wife, and raiding his refrigerator. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Guys, remember when you were little, you dreamed of being discovered? Well, here we are. <laughs> dreamt. Thanks to TV commercials. <laughs> What'd that idiot say? You dreamt, said dreamt, stupid. stupid. Not dreamed. <laughs> uh, thanks to TV commercials starring a cartoon bunny named Miffy. Tourism in New York City is way up. Create your own New York mascot and tell us what warnings we would have for visitors to the Big Apple. Patrice O'Neill. My mascot's name is James the Rat Whisperer. He talks to different... <laughs> He talks to different pests all around the city mm -hmm. and asks for favors on the behalf of the city. You'll see him a lot during a uh, Republican convention. He, he already whis whispered to all the midtown mice and rats to move uptown and the city will never bother him again. He also, because they're all sitting in Harlem and doing nothing about it, just let, let you know that. He also mm. made a plea to all the restaurant <laughs> roaches to crawl around on the dishes only after closing. He was, whatever. He, <laughs> he was sent to whisper to the Arabs, but uh, no one has heard from him for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Working conceptual, are we? Mike Brent. Oh, <laughs> Shut up, asshole. <laughs> That's what I get. All right, my mascot would be a smiling pair of binoculars called Naki. <laughs> Naki would have an assault rifle with fatigues on and a tattoo of each World Trade Center tower on his arm. And the slogan would be, come to the Big Apple, but if you try to bite it, you will get f***ed up. <laughs> All right. Jim Norton. Uh, I think my mascot would be a pit bull, and uh, the ads would feature him attacking Miffy and tearing his throat out. <laughs> 
And I'd state in the end that if you thought Miffy was adorable and represents New York City, then you should stay home because chances are you're a fat Midwestern idiot who's going to come here to see the Lion King, eat at TGI Fridays, and then tell everyone you really enjoyed your gritty New York experience. <laughs> so uh, do us and yourself a favor. Take any cash you to spend here and mail it into us. It will save you the humiliation of being beaten up and mugged and save us the irritation of looking at your wide-eyed, semi-retarded faces. <laughs> we'll be right back. On the show you had uh, only three comedians. Yes. How did that feel for you? It felt pretty good, actually. Yeah. Uh, Patrice assumes it was his fault, was it? Well, he doesn't assume it's his fault. He just has delusions of grandeur that everything you know has to relate to him and nothing to do with him. <laughs> but I think it works out for the best. Did it? Uh, does Patrice it bother is... you that Jim Norton is always wearing that Opie and Anthony? Uh, does oh. it bother you that Jim Norton's always wearing the Opie and Anthony paraphernalia? No, no, because I know he's going to turn on us the minute Opie and Anthony comes back.